Hello and welcome to another exciting Denka webinar. My name is Dr. Yaron Gabel and I am the clinical advisor of the company. Today I want to talk about how to revolutionize full mouth implant supported prosthesis in your practice. For those of you who are not familiar with Denka, Denka is a company that has been around for almost 11 years now. It initially was created by several dental professionals who just wanted to make full mouth restorations a lot easier and less hassle free. In order to do this, they created a very unique set of trays that will allow you to take your final impressions, your vertical dimension, and the CR tracing records on the same patient appointment, and combine it with CAD technology to be able to create top-of-the-line dentures that would fit very accurately into your patient's mouth. Recently, Denka is also the proud owner of the first FDA 3D printable material for tooth and base that several labs across the U.S. are now using. Now, as you all know, full mouth restorations can range in terms of treatment complexity from conventional dentures all the way to full mouth fixed implant supported dentures like your all on fours or, or your all on six. And especially with our implant restoration, we notice that we can give our patients a lot of great benefits. They get increased chewing efficiency, and especially for the upper palate, since we're actually removing it, we give them increased temperature and taste perception as well. And the prosthesis does not dislodge or press down on the gums, which is great. It actually allows patients to regain back their basic eating functions as just when they had actual teeth in their mouth. But one thing we do notice is once we go up in treatment quality, so also does the cost of treatment for our patients. And many people ask me, well, what do you think that is? Well, I think it basically boils down to time. Especially when you're also placing implants and planning a surgical component, it becomes a very lengthy process. You have to calculate where your implants are going to go, what angulations are going to go. You have to plan the surgical component a lot. Then you have to take your impressions. You have to get the bar, the bar made especially for hybrids and all in fours. There's several appointments going back and forth between the implants and the bar and then fitting the superstructure to the bar. So if you're doing an all in four, if you're doing a hybrid denture, you know you're kind of looking at about seven to ten appointments just to be able to finish up a case. And then there's also the complexity of the, the case. Once you finish the case itself, then there's also the difficulty to clean and maintain. You know you're going to have to see that patient every four to six months. And every time you see them, you know you're going to have to spend at least one hour to be able to take that restoration out, clean it out, and then you have to keep ordering components and fixing the restorations. And in the end, one day you might just have the patient come back to your office and you'll get something like you see in the picture. And you know it's not going to be a good day. You know you're going to have to retake impressions and restart the process all over again. And at some point, you know you will need to exchange that superstructure, whether it's 5, 10, 7, 20 years, but you will need to change it. And the literature will tell you that eventually, at some point, you will either get loss of resin cover, loss of over-denture retention, or fractures of the resin. Now, I want to ask you, would you rather rely on a system that will let you get another superstructure with a push of a button, or would you rather keep taking impressions and starting the process from scratch? And more often than not, once you remake this superstructure, you'll hear patients saying, you know, it doesn't quite look like the one I had before. So it's never going to be consistent unless you're actually using CAT technology and incorporating it into your practice. So taking all these issues into consideration, Denka created what they call Denka 4, which is a full mouth fixed implant zirconium or PMMA restoration, which is connected to segmented titanium bar technology. Now, it's very important to mention that in order to do a case with NK4, you need to have at least one fully dentulous arch, and said arch needs to have at least four implants and up to six implants in the arch. Now, maybe you get a patient that already has five, six, seven, eight implants, and you only want to use four. You can cover the other implants and only activate or, or only restore the implants that you want to use. Many doctors usually realize that restoring four implants is usually enough for the Denka 4 system. Now, the way it works is we design one bar per each of the implants that you want to restore, and then we'll create a superstructure that will be screwed into the two most posterior bars. Now, 
What makes this BART technology so unique is several things. First of all, these are actually make custom made for each of your implants. So you can have different brands of implants into your cases and we can still restore it. We're gonna make one bar to match each of the internal hexes of your implants. You can use different diameters and different angulations as well. So you no longer need to worry about implants being parallel to one another. another. You can place implants at any position and any angulation you desire, looking for those areas of better bone quality and higher bone density. This is especially important for lower arches. When sometimes when we try to make them parallel to one another, we get dangerously close to the lingual wall. Another great benefit of the Denka 4 system is that you don't need to secure the 16 millimeters that you would normally would for an all on four restoration. As long as you're securing about 6.5 millimeters per arch or 13 millimeters of interarch space, you're going to be good to go. And this is because we're milling the superstructure all together from one puck. We're not creating acrylic and building denture teeth on top of that, which would require a lot more space. We're actually milling everything in the color of the teeth and then building up the gums. And another great benefit is we give you full cantilever support. We're going to design these bars to extend either posteriorly or anteriorly to make sure we're supporting the arch completely. Now, we design the bars together with the superstructure to ensure there's tissue continuity within the superstructure all the way to the bar and then to the other side of the superstructure itself. We're also going to assign you 0.5 millimeters of space between the bars and the gums so that your patient can clean itself. I'm going to explain more on that a little bit later. And then, of course, it uses the same CAT technology that you might be familiar with the old Denka dentures, where the software itself is going to calculate everything for you. It's going to all you have to do is submit your records and it's going to calculate the midline curve of speaker of Wilson occlusal plane for you, reducing the degree of error that is sometimes happening with your lab technicians. You can get easy duplicates since we keep digital files of our records. All you have to do is call and request another superstructure to be mailed and you can get another one at no additional impressions necessary. And then there's the simple maintenance appointments as well. As you see, all you have to do is remove two screws remove the superstructure, clean out the bars and the areas, and then reply the superstructure and reconnect with the two screws all over again. So instead of spending about an hour and a half replacing the superstructure, so all you have to do is spend about 15 minutes of your maintenance appointments just taking it out and cleaning it up. Now, many people ask me, well, what about the, the clinical protocols? What is it that I need to send you? In order to be able to do a case. Well, what we will need from you is an implant level impressions. Please bear in mind that you will not need any multi-unit abutments. Since the bars themselves will correct the angulation for you, make sure you're taking these impressions at an implant level. And we're also going to need vertical dimension and CR records. Very, very important, once you're ready to do a Denka 4 case, your implants must fully be integrated by that point. You cannot, unfortunately, use the Denka 4 system for immediate implant loading. If you do want to do immediate implant loading, I can show you a different solution that we have created for you, but it's not going to be the Denka 4 itself. But in order to do a Denka 4, your implants must already be integrated. Now, implant level impressions and VDNC records can be obtained in many ways. If you do have digital options at your office, such as a, a cone beam or an interval scanner, you can certainly use those, and they're going to save a lot of time for your first appointment. First, let me talk about semi-digital records. So this is usually what we get sent to our lab. It's an open or closed tray impression, which will show us the implant angulation, the implant position, and the hex position of our implants. And then we get a CBCT scan of the patient wearing whatever current dentures they have them on without a jig or bite stick. It's very important that the people who take the CBCT scan do not use the bite stick. The reason for that is once they're biting on the bite stick, you're actually modifying the vertical dimension that the patient should be at. So you want them to be biting at their current position and you want the vertical dimension that the current dentures have. Now, if the patient has a vertical dimension that you don't like, let's say the dentures that he's currently on have a collapsed vertical, you can always tell us that you want to open vertical by two, three millimeters, so however much you need it open by, and we can open it for you. 
Now, if you also have scan bodies, you can place the scan bodies directly on the implants and use your internal scanner, and then you can avoid taking your open tray impressions and you can go impression free. So as you can see in the pictures here, the doctor placed the, the, the scan bodies directly over the implants and then he is using the internal scanner to obtain records for this case. In this case, the doctor is doing a single arch, so he scanned the lower arch and he scanned the upper with the scan bodies. Now, if you don't have scan bodies, you can acquire them through the Denka website. This is a list of the scan bodies that we do have for sale, which is also going to give you a rough estimate of what implants we support. We support a couple more than this. So if you have a question regarding whether we support the implant that you use or not, give customer service a call and ask them what implant brands they support of their, or if they support the implant brand that you use. Now, if you don't have access to digital records in your office, you don't want to invest in a CBCT scanner, you can also use the Denka trace for your vertical dimension and CR records. Also, if you're doing a single arch that's supposing a denture, unfortunately, you must use this method. So for single arches, we need to be able to see the teeth as well. So the CBCT scan is used to obtain vertical dimension and CR position, but in the case of single arches, we would also need to see where the occlusal plane is. If you're doing a single arch that's supposing actual dentition, we can see the teeth on the CBCT scan. However, if it's supposing a regular dentition, uh, sorry, if, you, if it's supposing a denture, then we're not going to be able to see this denture in the CBCT scan. If that happens, unfortunately, you will need to use the Denka trace. Now, let me go into a little bit more detail about what would happen with the Denka trace. So, Denka trace, as you might have heard of, come in pairs of upper and lower. They come in four different sizes. They're color-coded for size as well, and they fit 99% of your patients. The way you would do it is this. They come in certain combinations, so you would need the single arch attachments if you're doing a single arch case, or use your full upper and full lower to do a complete case. What you would do is, first you would take the Denka tray, fill it up with PVS, seated on the arch. In this case, we're going to remove the posterior attachments. They're not necessary. They're usually necessary for dentures, but they're not really necessary for what we're doing here. And then you're going to take one of these single arch attachments and you're going to put bite registration PVS and copy the shape of the dentate arch. Now, as you can see in the picture over here, the lower arch, whether you're using a lower attachment or a lower mandibular tray, will have a central bearing pin the central bearing pin will serve two purposes. First, it goes up or down to help you establish your vertical dimension, and it's also going to work as a tracing pin that is going to trace your CR tracing movements on a particular surface, which we call an easy tracer. So once we get the patient to the correct vertical dimension, what we're going to be doing is we're going to attach one of these easy tracers to the upper arch, and then we're going to ask the patient to do one of the three tracing methods. You can have them do gothic arch tracing, which is protrusive, retrusive, protrusive, retrusive. And when they're on most retrusive, you will ask them to do lateral movements. And that is going to create a very precise arrow, a tip of which arrow is going to be your centric position. If they cannot do laterals, just have them do protrusive and retrusive. And look for that most posterior dot. And if they can't do that either, just guide them into centric yourself and just tap several times to be able to record where that centric point is. Once you know where your centric is, just drill a little dimple so the head of the pin can lock into the dimple you created where your centric is. Have the patient put himself in that centric position by having the head of the lower pin lock into the dimple and then just fill out the space with bite registration material. Very importantly, make sure you hold the lower tray firmly when you are taking your bite. Sometimes if we have n no good reach on the lower, the lower tray can move a little bit when we're trying to get our bite records. If you're doing a single arch also, be sure to include a stone model of the opposing dentition. And if the patient really likes their current set of dentures, you can also send a stone model of the denture so we can try to emulate the tooth size, tooth shape, and tooth position as closely as possible with the teeth design that we have on our lab. We will also need a patient picture. Eyes open, cheeks retracted. If you're taking impressions with the Denka trace, take, make sure they're wearing the trace when you take the picture. 
if you're not using the Denka trace and you did a CBCT scan, take a picture of the patient wearing their current dentures. What we do is once we get these records into our lab, we're going to overlap that picture with the digital records that you send us, and we will be able to get a good reference of the patient's position. This is very important, especially for midline, where sometimes the patient, due to a fracture, knows the internal anatomy midline will be different from the external anatomy. The way you can do it is either A, you can take your camera, you can take the patient pictures and upload them when you place the order, or you can go to m.denka.com from your phone on your web browser, type that, you won't have to download anything, it'll launch an app that will allow you to snap a picture of the patient and then upload it to our cloud. Very important, if you use our app, write down the picture reference number that you will obtain in the end. It's the only way we can pull the picture out from our cloud is with that number. So make sure you write it down and put it on the prescription. Also select your tooth shades. Um, we have light pink, light reddish pink, original pink, and dark pink. As for tooth shades, we have all available shades. So if you have a question whether we can support one of the shades or you don't have a Vita shade guide to calculate your shades, give us a call, tell me what you got, and we'll be able to convert it to Vita and, and tell you if we support that specific shade that you have. When it comes to shapes, we have three different shapes, ovoid, squared, square tapered, which we call the universal, and four different sizes. Here are more or less the average measurements for the teeth in case you want to decide which mold you want to use. Otherwise, the software will choose one for you. Once you get all your records, go into denka.com and place your order online. If you have not done so, you will need to sign up. So do so by clicking on the sign up button on the upper right and answer simple questions like what password and username you would like, what your dental license number is, what your doctor's name is, and then it'll log you in and then you can click on orders and it'll open up a prescription sheet where it'll ask you what your patient's name is. You will be able to upload the pictures in there in case you took them with your camera and then ask you the gender if you want to try and what tooth shade color you want, what gum shade color you want, what implant brand you use, and then in the end, there will be a section that will ask, say, impressions and or CVCT diacom files. You can either upload your scans at this moment or click on physical impression will be mailed and then just check out. It's kind of like Amazon. It'll just ask you what your shipping address is, ask for a payment method, especially if you did select physical impressions will be mailed. You will be able to, to print a shipping label and then just call FedEx for a pickup so you can send us your case. Now many people ask me, well, what happens once you're modeling? What happens when you get the cases into your office? Well, first things is if you actually submitted actual impressions, we will scan those and we're going to remove any excess information that we don't need, as you can see in the picture on the rightmost area. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna overlap that CVCT scan with your open tray impression or with your scan body impression. From there, we're gonna digitally articulate and we're going to find the hex position for your implants. We're going to generate the bars first based off of each of your implants. And once the bars are created, we are going to set the teeth with our software. And then we are going to generate the gum shells. In the end, the bars and the superstructure will be separated. We are going to mill the titanium bars for you. And then we are going to mill a provisional that you will get on your second appointment. And we're also going to 3D print you a washable trine. So when you get your case on your second appointment, you will get a box that will contain an evaluation form. Essentially, what we're going to be doing on appointment two is going to be bar fitting. We're going to be checking the occlusion. We're going to be doing a wash and taking a new bite. And then we're going to be sending the patient home with their new provisional. So on appointment number two, the patient is already going to walk out with something fixed. And as I mentioned before, you're going to get your bars and your implant screws. These screws are going to be the same implant screws that you normally use for your implants. So you can use the same screwdriver that you normally use to deliver any type of restoration to your implants. It'll also come with the two Denka screws that will attach the superstructure to the two most posterior bars. It'll come with a washable trine that you can identify by the fact that it does not have any holes on it. And then a mill provisional that will have the two screw holes on the two posterior sections. 
one really good habit that you can do once you get your bars is to take your deliverable provisional and place each of the bars into their corresponding sockets. Now, each bar is only going to go into the corresponding socket. This is especially important if you're doing six bars per arch and you're doing upper and lower. You're going to get 12 bars, and without doing this exercise, it's going to be very difficult to know which case goes where. You don't want to screw in one bar in one area and then realize it would go somewhere else. So this is going to help you get a good lay of the land so you can figure out where everything should go. Then you're going to place your bars. You're going to tighten them to 30 newton centimeters with your screwdriver and a manual torque wrench. And then we're going to proceed to evaluate our washable trines. So in order to do that, it's important that you add PVS adhesive into the washable trine. Again, this is the one that will not have the screw holes. Once the PVS adhesive dries out, apply heavy body PVS. Only about a fourth of the socket is enough to not fill out the whole thing because once you seat it to get a wash off the bars, if it overflows, it's going to flow under the bars and the impression is going to lock into place and it's going to be hard to remove. So make sure you're only adding about a fourth of the socket in terms of how much material you're adding. Do not overfill. Then seat it in the mouth. Evaluate everything else, your midline, your occlusal plane. If you need to make any markings, make set markings. And then in the end, take a new PVS bite. Take the whole thing out and you're going to ship that back to us. At the same time, what you're going to be doing is you're going to take temporary cement. You're going to take your deliverable provisional and you're going to fill all the interior sockets with temporary cement, again, only a small area is necessary. You're going to get about 40 to 60 microns of space between the bar and the superstructure. So there's no need to add a lot of temporary cement to it. The easier to remove the cement, the better. And then you're going to seat it in the mouth and you're going to secure the two posterior tenka screws and tighten them to 10 newton centimeters. If you need to adjust the occlusion slightly, then go ahead and do so at this moment. And then you can send the patient home. Many people ask me, well, what about the color of the gums? Well, in my opinion, the patient's only going to be wearing this for about a week, week and a half. I personally don't think it's necessary to have any colored gums. If you do want to color the gums, you can either stain them yourself or you can layer them with composite if you would like. But the thing that I consider to be the most important about this appointment is you have to give them a water pick on this appointment. You must teach them to use it and the reason I want to give them the water pick on the second appointment is you'll see them a week later, so it will give you a good opportunity to evaluate how diligently they're cleaning. If they can't clean properly during the trying stage, you're going to have a lot of trouble later on. So this is a good opportunity to catch any issues and train them properly on how to clean themselves, how to use the water pick, and ensure they're doing a good job. As you know, it doesn't matter what system you're using. If the patient's not cleaning, your implants are going to and then we're going to manufacture the final restoration. We're going to make it either from PMMA with layered composite for the gums or zirconium with layered porcelain for the gums. And then we're going to send you a superstructure for you to deliver on your final patient appointment. Final appointment is very, very simple. You're going to unscrew the provisional, take it all out, clean out any areas, apply temporary cement on the anterior sockets of your final restoration, seat it, Put your screws in and tighten them to 25 newton centimeters. Again, special considerations, water pick is a must, they must use it every day. And maintenance appointments, I would recommend first year do one every three months. Once you see they're cleaning properly and they're being diligent in what they do, then maybe for every four to six months after that. Now, one last thing, of course. If you do plan to do a case straight from extractions and do immediate loading, we do have two more products that you can use. If you're planning immediate loading, we can create a Denka temp and a surgical stent that you can use the day of implant placement. Or if the candidate is not, the patient's not a candidate for immediate implant loading, then we can also offer you an immediate denture service. If you want to inquire more about these products, Call the customer service department and they'll be more than happy to explain what to do. For these cases, first appointment records are very simple. Either take 
alginate impressions, pour up your stone models and send us upper stone, lower stone and a PVS bite. Or if you have an internal scanner, scan the upper arch, scan the lower arch and scan the bite and we will be able to make you either an immediate denture or a denkatem. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call customer service. I know I did not discuss anything about pricing. The reason is I want this webinar to stay online for a long time. If I tell you next pricing and pricing changes in the future, then it's not going to be accurate. So if you have questions about pricing, please call customer service and go online and see what our pricing is. It was a pleasure hosting this webinar for you today. If you have any questions, give me a call and I'll be more than happy to support you with any questions you might have. Thank you so much. Have a great week and thank you for joining.